Good morning, everyone. Jennifer LeClaire here with you, Senior Leader of the Awakening House of Prayer Global Movement. Our church, our prayer rooms, prophecy rooms, healing rooms, we're down here in South Florida, Fort Lauderdale to be exact. Come on by when you visit, when the lockdown lets you go. <laughs> Make a visit down to Awakening House of Prayer or watch our services online at ahop.online. You hear me talk a lot about prayer hubs, Awakening Prayer Hubs. Those are home-based groups, marketplace-based groups, prayer groups, e Hubs, electronic hubs, digital hubs. You can find out more about that at awakeningprayerhubs.com. Guys, we need to ramp up prayer in the nations. Uh, this crisis will be over, but let me tell you something. I don't mean to be a doom and gloomer, and I'm not a doom and gloomer. I'm a hoper and a lover, but there will be other things that come, and we need to take this opportunity and stand against some of the things the enemy is planning, and the only way to do that is in prayer. Amen. Awakeningprayerhubs.com. Join the movement. Get in on the webinar Book of Acts prayer movement, jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. Today's devotion is from Victory Decrees, Daily Prophetic Strategies for Spiritual Warfare Victory. And here's what I heard the Lord say in the devotion titled, It's Never Too Late. It's Never Too Late. Here's what I heard the Lord say. It's never too late because I'm never late, says God. So when you feel like the world is crashing around you, know it won't be long before I come crashing in on the situation that's burdening you, says the Lord. I will not let more come upon you than you can bear. I always provide a way of escape, says God. You will see my way of escape more clearly when you unburden yourself. Your spiritual vision will improve when you stop looking at what the enemy is doing and look at what I have already done in your life in past seasons. I will show up for you again. Believe me, says the spirit of the living God. Come on now. Ecclesiastes 3, 11, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3, and Isaiah 43, 18, and 19 are the scripture references for meditation today. The prayer starter and the decree. Father, help me see Jesus clearly in the midst of warfare. Help me focus on Jesus as the way of escape and wait for the words of the Holy Spirit to show me the strategy. I decree the enemy's blinding tactics cannot affect my spiritual eyes. I declare my God is never late to the battle and always leads me into triumph in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you, God, this morning. We thank you that you are a God who is never, 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 never late. We might be late showing up for church, but you're already there. We might be late showing up for work, but you're already, already there. You're never late. Your prayer answers are never late. You're always right on time. You're the on time God. We praise you this morning because of who you are. And even though we've missed the mark and even though we've missed opportunities because we weren't in the right place at the right time, you are the God who is always on time. You are the God who makes up for lost time. You are the God who interjects himself in time. You are that God. You hold our times in your hand. And we thank you, Lord, that we are safe and secure. Our times are safe and secure. As we follow after your spirit, oh God, you're ordering our steps. You are redeeming the time. You are restoring the years that the locust worm and the canker worm and all the worms of hell and the worms of life have eaten up. God, we thank you that you are an on-time God. Jesus, you are an on-time God. You are an on-time God. You are an on-time God. You're an on You can manifest a breakthrough in a moment's time because you hold time in your hands. Oh, I don't know where we're going with this, but keep pressing with me. Keep praying with me. Oh, Jesus, we thank you today that you are always on time. Father, 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 we cry out to you, the Father of time, the creator of time, the creator of all things, and we ask you, Lord, to give us grace in this season, to walk circumspectly, to give us grace in this season, to redeem the time because the days are evil, to give us grace in this season, God, to follow you wherever you 
you would lead us without fear without the voice of nagging spirits in our ear oh God would you help us Lord to realize that many there it is many of us are actually in a Kairos time and we're not recognizing the day of our visitation oh God would you open our eyes even now because the enemy has blinded our eyes with all of the trouble and the woes in the world he has distracted us from what is indeed a Kairos time for many in the body of Christ oh and some of the rest of you are gonna uh, uh, you're, you're right on the edge of a Kairos time just one more step just one more step just one more step and things would shift the promises of God will begin to manifest I'm telling you what God is the God of time and we are many of us in a Kairos time and we are not recognizing the day of our visitation we are not seeing the hand of the Lord in our current season oh God would you help us help us Lord we repent help us to change the way we think because we're looking at things all wrong oh Jesus so many of us are looking at things all wrong and we're listening to the wrong voices oh Jesus we're listening to the wrong voices oh Jesus help us Lord to tune our ears into you we want to miss our Kairos time we don't want to miss that perfect moment we don't want to miss the opportunity of a lifetime we don't want to miss it 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 some of you are on the edge you're on the cusp of something great the breakthrough you've been praying for in past seasons it is right there within reach it's right there in your grasp you could reach out and touch it if you could just see it oh but God we're looking at so many of the wrong things and we're so distracted by the people issues and there's so much going on around the world it is pulling us here and it's pulling us there and it's competing for our attention oh God would you help us would you help us would you help us would you help us give us your undivided attention to give our ear to you and you alone to give our eyes to you and you alone to give our heart to you and you alone everything about us our thoughts our words our actions help us Lord to give it to you and you alone Jesus our times are in your hands I told you we were going somewhere our times are in your hands and many of us are right smack dab in the midst of a Kairos and we're not recognizing it we can't see it all the smoke and mirrors all the subterfuge all the false flags all of these distractions God would you help us help us Jesus to see what's really going on not what the devil wants us to see not what our friends want us to see but what you want us to see not what our husbands want us to see our wives want us to see what you want us to see not what CNN wants us to see not what Fox News wants us to see what you want us to see oh Jesus help us Lord just to just to, I just see a picture right now of so many of you thank you Jesus if you'll just follow God have you ever seen this is what I'm seeing in the spirit right now listen to me the how like uh, Indiana Jones or whatever adventure and they're going through the brush and they're taking the big machete and they're cutting away they're just pounding away they're just clearing the way through the jungle through the wilderness through the place that you've never been before that is God there are all kinds of things going on in the world but if you will follow God he's got his machete he's got that sword he's cutting away all the brush all the tall weeds that would trip you up he's making a way he's making a way he's making a way he's making a way but you got to follow him oh Jesus if you feel like you're in the mud if you feel like you're stuck in the weeds maybe just maybe just maybe just maybe you didn't take a right turn when he turned right if you feel like you are in the wilderness right now if you feel like there's just the, 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 the you can't see the forest from the trees maybe just maybe just maybe you didn't turn left when he turned left my Bible says thanks be to God who always leads me into triumph in Christ Jesus oh Jesus deliver us God we're in the middle of a Kairos time and we want to be carnal we're in the middle of a Kairos time and we want to be carnal we are in the middle of a Kairos time so many of us and so many of us want to be carnal Jesus being carnally minded is death but being spiritually minded is life and peace oh God would you help us today to follow your spirit God and stop following the ways of the world stop following the dictates of the flesh Jesus would you help us to 
shift our mindset even now so that we could understand and know the time that we are in it's a Kairos time I'm telling you what it's a Kairos time for so many I'm telling you the truth it's a Kairos time our times are in his hands God is looking for people to promote don't you remember when I prophesied that about two months ago Jesus well promotion time is here but not for the carnal minded promotion time is here but not for those who are listening to the wrong voice because you won't hear God's voice say come up here <laughs> God is calling out to many come up here but you can't hear his voice because of the voice of another that's in your ear we all have to make a decision in this hour we're either gonna follow God or we're gonna follow self or we're gonna follow somebody else who's following self or we're gonna follow the devil who are you gonna follow who are you gonna follow who are you gonna follow this is a day of visitation for many and we're too busy on our phones we're too busy ah oh, Jesus would you help us not to miss the day of our visitation the day of our promotion I just prophesied this like two months ago God is looking for people to promote God is looking for people to promote and here we are in the middle of a big test here we are in the middle of a big test a big test and he who passes will be promoted but you've got to be able to hear the voice of the Lord saying come up here come up here come up here God help us to stop being so distracted by every other voice the voice of fear and the voice of doubt and the voice of unbelief the voice of shame and the voice of pain from past seasons the voice of those who don't know the mind of God they don't have the mind of Christ the voice of our unrenewed mind the voice of newscasters and the voice of false prophets and the Bible says many voices have gone out into the world and none without significance help us Lord to stop giving significance to the voices that should have no significance in our life help us Lord to stop giving our ear to stop giving our heart to the voices that should have no place there let your voice be the loudest that we hear oh God we are in a Kairos time many of us many of us many of us not all of you perhaps but we are in the body of Christ in a time of crisis and crisis in Kairos can sometimes look a lot alike because it's in the midst of a crisis that you find that perfect opportunity it's in the midst of a crisis when you find the opportunity to set some time apart that you did not have before to seek God's face it's in a time of crisis that you have that innovative idea that helps millions and causes God to bless you it's in a time of crisis that things begin to look differently because you have a, a different perspective and you see things that were always there but you never noticed I'm telling you for many it's a Kairos moment don't miss the day of your visitation don't miss the opportunity help us Lord help us Lord help us Lord help me God not to miss the opportunity that's before my face <laughs> help all those listening to the sound of my voice God not miss their Kairos time and God is so good there'll be another Kairos time but why would we want to wander around in the wilderness another year or two why would we want to have to wait for the next opportunity when there's one right in front of our faces we just have to grab it help us Lord not to blow it help us Lord to submit to the pause help us Lord to still ourselves and hear your voice and be willing to obey you radically many speak of radical obedience but only the remnant really demonstrates it many speak of radical obedience I'll follow God anywhere I'll do anything I'll sell all my possessions and move to India and preach the gospel many claim such obedience fewer walk in it it is a process of learning to love God and trust God and understanding his kindness but father help us to grow in this season so that we can demonstrate radical obedience give us that grace of obedience or we want to be counted among the remnant we want to be counted among the remnant God the church within the church the ones who are on fire the ones who will do anything for you sacrifice it all lay it all on the altar that's how we want to live and move that's how I want to live and move I can't speak for you but since you're up so early praying with me I have to think that you must be in agreement with what I'm saying so father help us Lord not to miss our Kairos moment in the midst of this crisis the enemy thinks it the enemy thinks it's a Kairos moment for his works
And in many people's lives, yes, in many people's lives, the enemy's Kairos moment is manifesting. The enemy's opportunity is being played out in the lives of many. The opportunity to steal, the opportunity to kill, the opportunity to destroy. And we have to be discerning. God, give us the grace of discernment, the grace of obedience. We just need mega grace, God. <laughs> we just need mega grace. We just need mega grace, God. We just need mega grace. 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 We're weak. Our spirit is willing, but our flesh is weak. Strengthen our hearts, God. Renew in us a right spirit. Put in us an enduring heart, a persevering spirit that we can keep on plowing. Because, God, sometimes we do get tired, and there are many voices, and there's so many external pressures, and yet you're still good, and you're still trustworthy, and you're still who you are. You are the Lord. You change not. You're immutable. You cannot change. You're incapable of changing. But you are able to change us. And so we put our hearts in your hand right now. And we say, Lord, have your way. We surrender to you. We don't want to miss our Kairos. Come on. And somebody needs to catch a fear of the Lord about this. It's not just, oh, if I miss my Kairos, oh, okay. There's another opportunity. No, you're actually hindering the purpose of God. And he still loves you and he's still good. And there will be another opportunity. Because he understands that you're frail and he understands that we are scared sometimes. He understands that we're incapable of trusting at whatever level. But that's why it's a test to see if we can get there. It's a Kairos time. Which way will we turn? Will we follow God or will we turn back to what's familiar, what's comfortable? It's a Kairos time. Which way will we turn? Will we follow God or will we follow the flesh? And what's Nevertheless, God loves you with a passion. And he's kind. Nothing's ever going to change that. Nothing's ever going to change that. God is kind. God is kind. God is kind. I just need somebody to get that. God is kind. God is kind. I saw on Instagram yesterday somebody quoted me from something I said a couple years ago. I'm a sucker for genuine kindness or sincere kindness. And I am. I'm a sucker for sincere kindness. I see so little of it in the world. When someone is really kind to me, it just really touches my heart. I'm a sucker for sincere kindness, not fake kindness. Sincere kindness. Sincere kindness. Do we even know what kindness is anymore? Do we? What does it mean to be kind? It means to be sympathetic. It means to be helpful, gentle, to bring relief in a difficult situation. To be loving. God is kind. God is kind. The Bible says, love is patient, love is kind. Well, God is love. That means love is kind. Father, would you help us to taste and see how kind you are? Taste and see that God is good. Taste and see the kindness of God. Luke 6.35 says, he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. <laughs> love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. <laughs> Jesus, help us, Lord, to come up higher. Come on, beloved. If he's kind to the ungrateful and the evil, how much more will his kindness pour over your life? I'm telling you, his kindness is pouring over your life. Whether or not you're receiving it is another story. But God is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. How much more to his sons and daughters? Help us, Lord, to discern your kindness, even the kindness that operates through people. Help us, Lord, to discern that you've sent people in our life to say a kind word or to perform an act of kindness on one of our roughest days, God. Romans eleven twenty two. Look at this. Note then that the kindness and severity of God, the severity toward those who have fallen, but listen, but God's kindness to you. Note God's kindness to you, provided you continue in his kindness. God's kindness to you. What was God's kindness to you? To send Jesus Christ to die on a cross to pay the price for your sins. That was the kindness of God. Help us, Lord, to walk in kindness. Come on, God is kind. I want you to get this. He's affectionate. He's generous. He's compassionate. He's considerate. He's cordial. He's courteous. He's friendly. He's gentle. He's gracious. He's kind. Father, help us to explore the beauty of your kindness and to receive it in our hearts 
that we'll have some kindness to pour out to somebody else. Romans 2 4 says, Or do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that the kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? We shouldn't take his kindness in vain. While God is kind, he loves me anyway, so I can sin. That's what Paul's saying. He's saying, don't presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience. Don't say, well, God is kind. He loves me so I can sin. He said, it's the kindness that should lead you to repentance. It's the kindness of God that should cause you to reassess your behavior. It's the kindness of God and how good he is to you that should make you say, God, I'm so sorry. You've been so good to me. And I violated your law. Forgive me. Kindness should lead us to repentance. God, let your kindness lead us to repentance. And I just speak to the voice of condemnation that wants to plague so many of you. And I cut off that voice of condemnation. And I ask you, Lord, to let the voice of kindness be louder than the voice of condemnation. Because it is your kindness that leads us to repentance. We don't want to run from you when we sin because we're afraid of what you might do. We want to run to you because we know what you'll do. You'll forgive. Every time we come to you, you'll forgive. Father, help us. Help us to receive your kindness. You are kind. You are sympathetic. You're thoughtful. You're understanding. You're amicable. You're benevolent. You're philanthropic. You're good-hearted. You love us. Titus 3, 4 talks about the goodness and loving kindness of our God appeared. That was Jesus. And everything he's doing by sending Jesus Christ to be our Lord and Savior, to pay the price for our sin, he did all this according to Ephesians 2, 7, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us. The Father shows the measurable, immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus by sending Jesus. Father, we thank you that you were so kind to send your son to die on a cross to pay the price for our sins. While we were yet sinners, he died for us because of your kindness. Because of your kindness. You bless us, not because we deserve it, but because of your kindness. You lead us to repentance, not so that you can bash us over the head with a hammer when we get to your throne, but because of your kindness, because you want to show us kindness. And I need every believer praying with me right now. Please. Because some of those who are listening don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as kind. They know him as religion has painted him. And maybe you've run from God because you didn't see him as kind. You saw him as one who would punish your sins. And maybe you might be stricken dead at any moment. You might get in your car and have a crash because of your sin. God's punishing you. That's the wrong narrative. That's not our God. He's kind. He hates sin, but he loves you and he's gracious. I need every believer that's a true believer. I need all the remnant praying with me right now. Maybe you don't know the Lord as your Savior, but Sunday is resurrection day and you can have a new life today. Your spirit can be born again. Jesus came in kindness to pay the price for your sin. We all have a sin nature. We've all missed it and messed up. And if Jesus hadn't come to pay the price for our sin, we will be going to hell. There is a real hell. There is a real heaven. It's as real as earth. And maybe you've not known that God. Maybe he's been painted to you. Maybe you've even heard the gospel, but you don't want anything to do with the God of the gospel that was preached to you. The God of hell and fire. Yeah, there is a real hell and there is a real fire, but that's not meant for you to be in. That God never meant for any human being to go to hell. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him would have eternal life. They would never perish. You'll be alive forever and ever and ever in joy and peace and perfect health. No more tears. This life we have on the earth is just temporary. If you want to know the Lord Jesus Christ the way that I do and others know him even better than I, but he's kind. Then I want you to pray this prayer with me and I want you to take the love challenge. Everybody, all believers, I want you to take the love challenge. At school of the spirit TV it's free I'm going to tell you about that in just a moment I need all the real believers praying with me right now because somebody's about to get saved so if you want to know the Lord Jesus Christ pray this prayer with me father in the name of Jesus I ask you to forgive me of my sins I choose to accept Jesus as my Savior and as my Lord and I receive him into my heart right now. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Hallelujah. If you prayed that prayer, get yourself a Bible. Go to jenniferleclair.org slash peace with God. And you know what else you can all do? You can take the love challenge. We can do better, guys. We can do better. God told me about several months ago to go deep in love, to study love, and I've been doing that. And you can take the love challenge. It's free. If you want to donate into it, you can. That helps us. It does, it's not free for us to produce these things, but it's free for you to watch it. But you can go to schoolofthespirit.tv, and you can sign up for the love challenge. It starts Monday. It starts Monday. Schoolofthespirit.tv. Just look at the banner right there at the top. The love challenge. I've scrambled to put this together for you because I feel a, a, just an extreme urgency on it. And none of us get, get it right. You know, God is love. And sometimes we have wrong perceptions of him. This is going to challenge your narrative of God. So many of us have been taught wrong narratives. We have wrong narratives. The best uh, narrator of who God is is Jesus Christ. If you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. What does Jesus say about God? He called him Abba, which means dear father. It doesn't mean daddy, by the way. It just means dear father. It's an intimate term. Doesn't mean papa, by the way. I'm, I'm not picking on people who call him that. That's neither here nor there. But it actually means the, tra the literal definition is dear father. It's an intimate term. The love challenge. Hashtag love challenge. Come on. School of the Spirit TV. It's there for you. This is a, a truly a labor of love. And I want you to get in on it. I want us to all come up higher. All men will know that we're disciples of Jesus by the love that we show for one another. And we can do better. The body of Christ is sorely lacking in love. It's embarrassing. Fear is coming to the fore. Hashtag love challenge. And we can do better. Amen. While you're there, go sign up for the discerning the remnant. That starts April 19th. It's still on that low price, but the price is going up today. It has to. It's ridiculous. The classes are $4 each. There's seven sessions. There were eight sessions total. One of them was free. And we've got, to, we've got to raise the price on that to cover all the costs associated with doing it. So go get signed up for that if, you're, if you forgot. Sign up for the Love Challenge, which is free, and sign up for this other thing at the same time because uh, we're going to have to raise the price today. I said the first hundred. Now I think there's way more than that there. So there is way more than that there. So get involved in that if it's going to bless you. Amen? That's right. Uh, discerning the remnant. You can watch the first part free. It's right there at the top of the screen. God is good. God is good. If you want to sow into this ministry, you can do that at jenniferleclair.org slash donate. We could definitely use your help. We are now boosting our post every day to try to get these prayer calls out to people who have never heard them because we feel like it's encouraging people, sometimes inspiring, sometimes challenging, sometimes confronting us in our own weaknesses so that we can repent, stirring in us a heart of love for one another, and these calls need to get out there. So if you want to sow into the ministry, that's not all that we need to deal with. We've got a lot of bigger fish to fry than that, but I just want to let you know we are trying to boost these posts, and you can help with that. JenniferLeclair.org slash donate. You can use PayPal, paypal.me slash JenniferLeclair. You can use the text to give. All of these ways are listed on JenniferLeclair.org slash donate. Text to give is 754-701-2161. Text the word pray. 754-701-2161. Text the word pray. Venmo is at Jennifer LeClaire. Venmo is at Jennifer LeClaire. P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33303. P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33303. Amen. And I bless this offering in Jesus' name. Lots of stuff up there on jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. Awakening Live is Saturday. That's tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. UK Time. I'm going to be with Rob Cates from uh, Catch the Fire in London. This is going to be like a mini, M-I-N-I, -I, prophetic church service. Prophetic worship, prophetic prayer, prophetic exhortation. Get in on that. It's going to bless you. I'm going to do it tomorrow. And many of you said you're going to have an Awakening Blaze interest call. I'm going to do something better, uh, Awakening Prayer Hubs interest call. How do we find out more about Awakening Prayer Hubs? Well, you can find out a lot about it just by going to AwakeningPrayerHubs.com. That's really the quickest way to find out about it. You want to find out about it right now. Really, all the information is there. Uh, but I'm going to do a webinar also on April the 23rd, Discover a Book of Acts Prayer Movement. We want to get see the miracles, the signs and wonders like they saw in the Book of Acts. Then we need to be 
praying a little differently than many of us are praying with more consistency with more fervency so I'm going to talk about a book of Acts prayer movement what that looks like and how awakening prayer hubs fits into that and you don't have to have a church to start a prayer hub now to start an awakening house of prayer you do have to have a church that's a full-blown house of prayer that's like what we have in Fort Lauderdale but you don't need to have a church to start a prayer hub you can have an e-hub you can have a hub in your house you can have a hub in a prison or in a marketplace so go get signed up if you want to watch me teach this class on the book of Acts prayer movement and explain at the end I'm gonna explain about the prayer hubs yeah cash app is dollar sign Jennifer LeClaire capital J capital L capital C but some of you don't need to wait because we need to get this prayer hub thing I'm telling you I'm not a doom and gloomer I'm believing for a third great awakening but what I know about awakening is it always comes after really hard times I'm sorry to say we need an awakening we know we need an awakening but it's why all my stuff's called awakening awakening house of prayer awakening magazine awakening films come on but we know that historically all the great awakenings and the and the sweeping uh, renewals came after hard times and so I don't think this is the end of it and we don't want the enemy to gain an upper hand we need to pray away what can be prayed away and we need to prepare the church by intercession and standing in the gap for the church come on you've seen some ugly haven't you during this time the great falling away is underway get on the email list guys jenniferleclair.org and I will see you later on have a great day